From Hong Kong's most successful Olympic Games to a skateboarder becoming one of the youngest ever gold medalists, there have been no shortage of surprises at Tokyo 2020. We're now at the halfway mark of these games, so let's head to Tokyo to speak to sports reporter Jonathan White. Johnny, for, for a long time there, we had no idea whether these games were going to go ahead you know, to begin with. Now we're already halfway through the games. What have been some of your highlights? Well, I think the, the opening ceremony was certainly a highlight because it meant that the games were still going ahead. They'd been threatened that they might not happen even as late as a couple of days beforehand. Um, aside from that, Hong Kong, it's been the greatest ever Olympics so far. Um, could get even better, but there's, there's been goals in the, in the fencing there for Edgar Chung Kalong, and then there's been uh, Siobhan Hockey in the, in the swimming with two silvers, um, both of which took Olympic records to beat her. And the way she progressed through the heats and then the semis and into the final, and she was getting better and better, um, it's a shame that she's not going to finish with a shot of the 50 metres when she was enjoying herself. But, you know, th that's been fantastic. And hopefully there's more to come. Yeah, so, so why did she pull out of the semi-final? She had made it in, she had a, you know, a solid run in, in the 50s heat. So what happened there? Um, the Swimming Association, or via the HK Olympic Committee, uh, told us that she got injured. Um, the injury was reported as a back injury at the time. Um, it's since come to light that it might have been a hip injury. I think that's immaterial. The fact is she wasn't 100%. You know, she's got a lot more swimming to do. The 50 metres was sort of for enjoyment's sake rather than the, the two and the one where, you know, she felt great about doing it. So they, they decided between them that she would uh, pull out and then even though she would swim the, uh, the medley, with uh, the rest of the team. Uh, it's it's also been an amazing week for China. They're me leading the medal tally. It seems like they're just chasing gold at this point. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a great week for China in some respects. You know, th there's been uh, medals where they expect. Um, they target certain sports every time, and they came into this Olympics with with targets in mind. Um, there's also other sports where they they don't normally do so well. For example, rowing, where they brought in uh, the British Olympic legend, Steve Redgrave. Um, he's coming as the high performance director of the Chinese Rowing Association. 2018, um, within three years, they've they've won a gold again for the first time since Beijing 2008. Um, the interesting thing there is that they're actually targeting Paris 2024 is when they're going to come good. So that's a bit worrying for, you know, other rowing asso associations. Um, aside from that, you know, they won the first gold of the games uh, in the shooting. Um, there's been gold in table tennis, but then there's also been upset so far. They, they missed out on a clean sweep of the table tennis for the first time since Athens 2004. Um, that was a spanner in the works. Uh, Japan came good there. But when it came to the singles, they uh, got their revenge. Um, looking elsewhere with the, the China Olympic uh, gold chase, the women's volleyball team were among the favourites when uh, the Olympics was uh, even a year ago, even coming into it a week ago. Um, it, it was them in the US that everyone was tipping to battle out for gold and they've struggled really badly. So it's been, you know, there's been places where they've uh, they've got golds that you might not expect and then places where they might expect gold that they're struggling a little bit. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, it's, it's not stopping them, I guess, powering ahead on the medal tally, closely followed behind by Japan. Uh, there's been some amazing wins. I think my favourite was probably the 13-year-old skateboarder. What about yourself? What have been some of your highlights from Japan? Well, yeah, that was really impressive. Um, you know, a 13-year-old skateboarder, a 15 or 16-year-old winning bronze for Japan as well, wasn't it? <laughs> Um, that's, that's crazy. They said they wanted to attract younger people to the Olympics. I thought these sports were meant to do that with them watching rather than who was going to win the medals. But I guess, you know, they've, they've done both of those things. Um, elsewhere, Japan have impressed uh, Ito and her partner winning the uh, mixed doubles table tennis to prevent that Chinese monopoly on gold medals that have been so long standing. Um, but they've had the disappointments as well. Um, Kento Momota, the world's number one badminton player in the men's singles, he went out in the group stage. 
Uh, Naomi Osaka obviously went out into tennis a lot earlier than people would have hoped. But there's been triumphs such as the uh, the young lad in the uh, gymnastics who uh, won his gold medal and then immediately thanked his parents. Uh, now we are only halfway. There's still a, a number of days to go. What can we look forward to, particularly for Hong Kong? There, there may be some more medal opportunities. Well, looking at Hong Kong, there are a couple of uh, medal hopes in action. Uh, Grace Lau is in the Kata Karate, which is making its Olympics debut, and they're handing out four medals. There'll be two bronzes. There's only 10, 10 karate exponents um, taking part in this. So she's got a good chance for that, um, as well as, you know, obviously she's earned the right to be there by being one of the uh, best karate uh, practitioners around. Uh, aside from that, Sarah Lee is going to lead the cycling charge. Um, Hong Kong cycling has been pretty strong um, and Lee has been the strongest out of them for some time. And, uh, you know, she's having one last crack at some Olympic medals here. Um, that's going to actually close out the games. It's been next Sunday that she's in, uh, in action for the last time. Um, beyond that, you know, Hong Kong is still involved and that's that's a good thing because everyone's been buzzing about the uh the hong kong team the delegation and what they've done um aside from that you know it's track and field now the swimming is about to wrap up tomorrow and we'll start to get into the events that a lot of people really like at the olympics you know namely the sprints some of the uh, long jumps the javelin the likes of that seems like there's a lot of excitement ahead johnny thank you very much for joining me today thank you